in this session of interferometry we discuss about pitter npl interferometers the constructional details of pitter npl gauge interferometer is shown in this picture the monochromatic light source is a cadmium lamp then it is condensed to by a condenser lens and it is focused to an illuminating aperture this provides a concentrated light source thus a parallel beam of light falls on a constant deviating prism and this prism splits the incident light rays into a different wavelengths and hence a different colors so the user can select a particular color by tilting the angle of this uh, constant deviating prism and for a particular angle it will give a particular uh, light ray of particular wavelength the prism also turns the light into 90 degree and directs it onto the optical flat the optical flat is tilted to an angle using a simple mechanism and uh, the past lights are getting reflected from three surfaces one from the bottom surface of this optical flat and one from the top surface of this slip gauges which is our workpiece and the third rays are reflected from the top surface top reflecting surface of the base plate so these three rays are actually combined to form uh, interference patterns and it is again redirected and it will pass through the optical system again but the path will be slightly deviated because of this uh, taper or the angle of the optical flat then it will be incident on this viewing aperture and uh, the fringed pattern will be appear on this viewing aperture it can be seen that two sets of fringes are displaced and displayed on the screen and one set is actually uh, reflected from the top surface of base plate and optical flat and another one is from reflected from and interf uh, interference patterns uh, from the top of the workpiece and the optical flat the displacement of these two sets of uh, interference patterns are due to slight taper on the surface of the workpiece and uh, this difference in uh, this uh, otherwise the displacement in two fringes is measured as a and uh, this b is the fringe spacing so we can have a ratio of this a by b and that is known as the fraction of fringe spacing so using this fraction of a spring uh, fraction of this displacement with the fringe spacing that is a by b can be utilized to determine the change in height on the surface of the workpiece so that is uh, given by this equation that uh, uh, fraction a by b is equal to h by this is h h by lambda by 2 so this h that is the difference in height of uh, that will be uh, actually experienced over the top of this workpiece otherwise the taper uh, that quantity h can be measured using this a by b into lambda by 2 where lambda is the wavelength of selected wave and that is the non wavelength of the selected light by knowing the change in height of this uh, slip gauge uh, we can calculate or compute the actual height of the slip gauge in next session we discuss about laser interferometers